Hi. It is like almost 7 p.m. on a random Saturday. Yesterday, I finished reading Let Me Set Up by Victor Hugo. And today I was just thinking like, oh, man, what should I do with all this free time that I have now? 24 hour read them. <laughs> and since this was not enough of bad ideas for one day, I've decided to do one where I read only classics. Okay, why is this a bad idea? Like, listen, I love classics, but reading only classics for 24 hours, it will melt my brain. <laughs> but I looked at my bookshelves and pulled a few very short classics. And I feel like I have a good variety of different books, so maybe this will work. I don't know, this is more of an experiment. If I only manage to read like two books in this readathon, so be it. But my TBR is not set in stone. I have a few books, hold on. I have three books that I definitely would like to read as like a break between like other classics that are a bit more, like require a bit more brain cells basically. We have two children's classics. First, The Little Prince and second, we have a book called Paddington. I will tell you a bit more about those books when I start reading them. Uh, and the third book is like a non-fiction called The Medium is the Message. I picked this out uh, because it's mostly pictures. In my latest video, which was a book haul, I did mention that I was thinking about doing this kind of readathon, and I was asking people whether they had any ideas for like graphic novels that could be considered a classic, but then I realized like I would rather read what I have on my bookshelves rather than buy something. Yeah, this book blends like text, image and photography and like talks about the uh, rise of modern mass media and I do think I can get through it very quickly. But other than those three books, I have a big stack of other possibilities. Yeah. Uh, those are them. And what I'm going to do, I want to find classics that will be easy to read and I'm just not sure would be suitable for a readathon like that. So I'm going to read like the first few sentences of all of those books. I'm not starting the readathon yet. First I'm going to kind of decide which one of those books I'm going to read. And after I have like my TBR set up, I'm going to, well not start the timer because like I feel like you have two versions of a 24-hour readathon. One where you just read from like, I don't know, 6 p.m. today until 6 p.m. the next day. Or you, you know, have a timer and whenever you take breaks, you stop the timer and you read for 24 hours. I am just going to read from like, I don't know, 7.30 or 8 p.m. today until 8 p.m. tomorrow. I don't feel like the timer stuff is for me. So let me just read, like, it's going to be like a page out of all of those books, uh, just to get a taste of what's the vibe, uh, what's the writing style. Will I be able to get through those classics quickly? So let's go. So very briefly, let me show you what I have as a pile of possibilities. We have Demian by Hermann Hesse. We have Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achebe. We have a short story, Even the Fool by Tolstoy. We have No Longer Human by Osamu Danzai. Uh, actually, Demian and No Longer Human, both of those books uh, are in my 2023 Classics TBR, so it would be great if I could get to like one of those books. Also, I have a collection of short stories, uh, with the title of short story being word number six, and this is actually also in my Classics TBR, so that's also a possibility. We have Madonna in a Fur Coat by Sabahatin Ali, Silas Marner by George Eliot. Someone mentioned this book in my last video when I mentioned that I wanted to do a 24 hour readathon of classics. I never thought George Eliot was an author that wrote easy classics, um, but I only read Middle March, so I'm not sure. But I'm gonna give it a shot. And lastly, we have Good Morning Mid Midnight by Jean Reese. So let's. Uh, read the first few sentences uh, out of all of those.
decisions were made. I have three books that I definitely don't think I want to read for this readathon. That being said, it doesn't mean I'm never going to read them, it's just I don't have the brain capacity to read them today, or in the next 24 hours at least. Those books are Things for All Part, Silas Murder, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Yeah, as I thought, George Eliot's writing style isn't really that easy to get through for me. And uh, short story, even The Fool by Tolstoy. This one started off, I don't know, the beginning or like the first few sentences, the first paragraph, had kind of a vibe of a fairy tale, which I don't like fairy tales, so this one I, I just read the first few sentences and was like, <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> but maybe, maybe someday. <laughs> so, I definitely would like to read the, the title short story word number six from this collection. That would be great because, like, I did put this book on my 2023 Classics TBR, but I didn't say that I really wanted to read this whole collection. I did want to read uh, word number six in particular. So it would be nice to knock off this book short story of the list. I really enjoyed the beginning of Good Morning Midnight. Very easy to read. It's about a woman who is living in Paris in 1930s in a hotel room. And I don't know what she's gonna be doing there, but uh, I've heard she's not gonna have a very good time. And then we have three books that I'm just, I'm not sure. I really enjoyed the beginning of Damien, but I'm just not sure if this is a book that I should should be reading this quickly. Like, I feel like I need more time with it to fully, like, grasp everything. But I really, really enjoyed it. Maybe, maybe not for today, but yeah, there's that. I also really enjoyed the beginning of Madonna in Fur Coat. Uh, this book is like a Turkish love story set in 1920s in Berlin. Interesting, we have 1930s Paris, 1920s Berlin. And yeah, a man falls in love with an artist. It's supposedly a very famous Turkish classic, so I'm gonna read that. And lastly, we have No Longer Human by Osama Danzai. I didn't um, love the first few sentences that I read, uh, but they were pretty easy, like, the writing style is pretty straightforward and, like, easy to get through. That being said, I do know this is going to be very depressing. <laughs> I think it's about, like, a guy who doesn't feel, like, connection to human race. I don't know, he doesn't... feels very isolated from people, and it, I think it's about... yeah, his, like, alienation from society. So, I am glad that I have books like A Bear Called Paddington to read in between those kind of books, because otherwise it would be depression fest. <laughs> I don't think I will be able to get to all of those books, I'm not gonna lie, because that is quite a stuck. But what time is it? It is 19 minutes after 7 p.m. Okay, let's say I'm gonna start at 7.30. I'm gonna grab a Red Bull, because I'm feeling a bit tired, but I don't want to make coffee just yet. And we'll start with the first book. Should we just go for No Longer Human? There is an audiobook of this book on script, so I don't know. I, I'm not sure how I'm, I'm gonna feel about this, but I'm gonna give it a shot. So I'll meet you in like 10 minutes. Okay, it is 7.30. So let's start this journey of reading classics for 24 hours. Wish me luck. Halfway through, no longer human. And we are starting this readathon with a bang because this is definitely one of the worst books I've read in my life. <sighs> in like modern day, this is like an equivalent of an insult writing a book. This is so misogynistic. Like, I am so over rich men being depressed and taking everything out on women. So the main character of this book, I feel like I was pretty pretty close with the premise here. Yeah, he doesn't feel like he's full human. He always feels like he has to act 
like a human and just to tell you a bit more about our main character, he, during his childhood, he didn't really pay attention in school, but he also always did well in school. He is kind of handsome and women love him, but also he sleeps with a lot of prostitutes, of course. My favorite quote about the prostitutes is, I never could think of prostitutes as human beings or even as women. They seem to me more like imbeciles or lunatics. Love that. Not that he treats because he says like he doesn't see them as a woman, but like it's not like he treats women any better. And yeah, I am going to finish it because this is a pretty quick read and you know, I need probably like an hour more to finish it. It's like 9 p.m., 9.15, but I am angry. <laughs> so like I understand a person can, you know, struggle with mental illness and have some trauma, but um, I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know if I can excuse his attitude and his actions, you know? So, I'll update you when I finish it. finished it. And maybe this is very unempathetic of me, because like I do know that this is a semi-autobiographical novel and that the author committed suicide soon after its publication, but being depressed does not excuse being an extremely shitty human being. It does not excuse, spoilers, marrying a 17-year-old because she's a virgin and you want to sleep with a virgin. I'm sorry, I, I cannot feel bad for this. Like, I mean, at the end, sure, I, I felt bad. Like, okay, hi, I just would like to add something when it comes to No Longer Human, because I have seen some people saying that, oh, others just didn't understand the book, like the meaning flew over their head and stuff like that. And I would like to address it because, yes, it is, kind of implied, I guess, uh, although I, I don't know, there, there might be some other interpretations. I, upon first reading, I actually interpreted that particular sentence differently, but a lot of people online say that it's not even implied, but it's said that the main character was kind of abused during childhood without getting into it. Uh, he, he does have some, like, trauma from his childhood, and the way he kind of perceives or treats woman, you know, might stem from that, from him having this kind of trauma. And I understand that. I understand that a lot of people, or, maybe, or some people at least, abuse others because they have been abused, like this kind of circle of abuse. And yeah, maybe the way he perceives and treats woman stems from that. But to me, kind of knowing that makes me kind of understand the character better, but it doesn't really excuse their actions, you know? And in my opinion, if a person kind of hurts others, whether it's physically or emotionally, because of some trauma, I feel like it's kind of on them to unpack that, you know? So, those are my two cents. I do think this paints a good picture of how mental health influences should I say this? Uh, how mental health plays a huge part in addiction. I can give it that, but I still am going to give it one star. I'm sorry, but like spoilers. Every single woman this main character encounters like wants to be with him, wants to sleep with him, and he pretty much cheats on like every woman he's been with. Like I said, he does marry a 17 year old. Like the genre is depressed misogynistic men, and I'm just not into it. So, this was a fun start to this vlog. I'm not gonna lie, I think I need to read the bear called Paddington right now because <laughs> this was too much. Also, it's like almost 11 p.m. I did have a little break while reading this book to play with my cat. She wasn't feeling that good today. She had a fever and we had to uh, take her to the vet. 
but earlier today she wasn't even like getting up really she, she didn't want to eat and now she's eating uh, after taking some medication and uh, she came into my room and like investigated my new it's not a duvet what is it called i put it on the screen but yeah she seems much better so i just wanted to spend time with her a little bit to pet her yeah i don't know what the plan is uh it's 11 p.m should i i'm gonna eat a snack i have like those quinoa chips that I really like. Do I want to drink coffee right now? I don't think I'm I don't think I'm there yet. So the plan is that I am going to sleep tonight, but probably only like, I don't know, three, four hours. Because I do need to sleep a little bit to like reset my brain so I can continue reading. But yeah, I am definitely going to read at least one more book. like definitely read one children's classic and probably start another book so yeah what a fun time <laughs> and I am only halfway through a bar called Paddington and obviously I'm really enjoying it it's so cute <laughs> like no notes it is for quite young kids I think although the vocabulary isn't that simple I don't think I mean for a children's classic but yeah I started thinking about my TBR and I realized that I don't have a play on my TBR for this vlog and that is a crime and also i just like looked at those books and i think both of those are quite depressing and after no longer human i'm just not sure how much more i can take i will read one of these i'm still not sure which one but uh, i was thinking maybe i should choose i'm in front of my bookshelf <laughs> i'll turn the camera around in a second but uh, i was thinking about choosing a play that is a bit lighter in tone so Let's, let's see what we have here. So this is where most of my plays are. Um, what do we have here? Uh, I have read both of these. I'm not sure I want to read Julius Caesar. I have read A Raisin in the Sun. I don't think I want to read any Chekhov because I have that one short story by Chekhov on my TBR. I have read As You Like It, really, really loved it. Probably my favorite uh, play by Shakespeare. I'll have to check out the synopsis for those two books. I don't really remember, like, tonally what kind of vibe they have. I have read Arcadia. I loved Arcadia, one of my favorite plays, if not my favorite play of all time. Shakespeare. Oh, Inspector General. I think this is like satire, so that is an option. Okay, let me pull those out. I'll have to use both of my hands because those play are like tightly stuck <laughs> in here, so I need both of my hands to like ugh, grab something. <laughs> okay, I looked at uh, the synopsis of three of those books and I think two of them seem to be a bit lighter in tone. This one by Federico Garcia Lorca, which has the house uh, of Bernalda Alba and Blood Wedding. I think this is more like drama and like seems to be a bit more serious in tone, so this is not for now. Those two though, The Inspector General by Gogol. This one is about this like village and they find out that uh, an inspector is coming to visit like incognito 
and the chief of police decides to like clean up the town before his arrival and this is like this is a satire it makes fun of kind of officials of the time and here we have six characters in search of an offer i actually don't know what this is about but it sounds quite meta and this was described as an intellectual comedy i am a bit worried about the intellectual part but since this is described as a comedy I kind of want to read this. So uh, I need to make some decisions. I don't know. Uh, I will finish A Bear Called Paddington and I will tell you what choices I've made. <laughs> and I'm back. I finished a bear called Paddington and this was adorable. <laughs> so here's the thing, I actually, well I wouldn't say I've read it, uh, my mom read this book to me when I was younger, but I'm pretty sure I was very young, like I don't know, five years old or something like that. So I actually didn't remember like most of the story. <laughs> the most surprising part to me was that Paddington actually emigrated from South America. He says uh, he's from darkest Peru and that he came to England on a lifeboat. And that's very interesting to me. I think the author actually said that uh, Paddington was a refugee. Did not know that. Uh, I actually haven't watched the movies. So here's the thing. I remember in like first or second grade we were supposed to like do a presentation or, or write something about uh, our favorite book. I'm guessing second grade because I don't think I could write in first grade. But yeah, we were supposed to prepare something about our favorite book and I've chosen a book called Paddington. And unfortunately none of the kids or maybe like one kid in my class uh, knew what that book was. Like in Poland, I don't think it was a very famous book at that time. I feel like now that uh, we have the movies, which I haven't watched actually just yet, I will. But yeah, at the time, this book wasn't that well known in Poland. And I felt very sad about it and felt silly that I only knew about the book and it was my favorite book. And many years later, I actually was talking with my one of my best friends, uh, Erin. We kind of met online. <laughs> And we were talking and I told her, like, I don't know why we were talking about it, but I told her the story that no one knew about this book back then. And she was very surprised because it's a very well-known book, especially in the UK. And our first meeting actually took place at the Paddington station. And let me show you something. At the Paddington station, I bought this little guy because they did have a gift shop. So Erin and I were still friends and yeah, it's so cute to have this little toy to remember our meeting. This was very overpriced, <laughs> but I'm glad I got it. So that was my history with uh, a bear called Paddington. <laughs> I'm sure it was fascinating to hear that, <laughs> but yes, the decisions that I have made. When it comes to the plays, I think I'm going to read an inspector, no, the inspector, I keep like mixing this up with An Inspector Calls, which is also a very famous play. But no, uh, The Inspector General by Nikolai Gogol. I feel like it would be nice to actually have something that is considered a classic and not a modern classic, because I feel like most of the books on my TBR are modern classics. So we have that also. I'm just a bit worried about this one because it's supposed to be quite meta and it says that uh, the display is brilliantly innovatory in his forms and themes. But like it like rethinks what play can be and like play with full format stuff like that. And I just feel like I need more brain cells to read this. So the Inspector General will be read, and also between those two, I'm picking Good Morning Midnight. I don't know. Uh, both of those sounded really good when I started reading them uh, at the beginning of the vlog, but I just feel like it will be easier for me to get for this one. I feel like this one had quite a lot of dialogue. This book I have heard about for the first time from uh, Emmy because she spoke about it on her channel since she was writing her thesis and this was one of the books that she was Kind of basing her thesis on because I think the hotel is very kind of prevalent in the story. 
So, uh, it is like 1am. I am feeling a bit tired. I don't think I'm going to drink coffee right now. I think I'm going to at least start an inspector... No, the inspector general. Sleep for a few hours and, I don't know, catch you up on whether I finished the book last night or not. So, I'm going to take a bath. put on the microphone because it's 9am and I'm the only one in my house that's awake so I don't want to disturb anyone so I'm going to be speaking quite softly and while I'll catch you up on what has happened in the past few hours and what I have read just a little disclaimer I will be putting on my makeup while I talk to you I have a mirror here sorry if it's like really bright but I do have to be next to the window to see what I'm doing and yeah Mm. Last night I started uh, the inspector general, also known as the government inspector. I didn't know it had like two titles. But yeah, I started reading it at like, I don't know, 2 a.m. And I didn't really like the translation that I was reading. It's from Dover Thrift Editions and the translation was by John Lawrence Samer and George Rappel Noyce or something like that. Didn't really care for that translation, didn't really like it. So I switched to an ebook because there was an ebook on script and that translation was done by someone named Thomas something uh, and I did enjoy it a lot more. I read I think until like 3, 3.30 maybe. I read the first three acts of the play and I went to sleep and I cannot tell you exactly like how many hours I have slept by s but something very weird happened. I don't know, I'm guessing I went to sleep at like 3.30, 4 a.m. and I set an alarm for 7.30 and somehow I woke up I don't know what time exactly, but like I'm guessing like 6 a.m. or something like that. So after like two, two and a half hours of sleep, I have no idea what happened. I think my body was like, okay, this isn't sleep, this is just a nap. <laughs> and I could not fall back asleep. I don't know what time exactly I woke up because I refused to open my eyes because I kept thinking, no, no, I will go back to sleep. I will go back to sleep. I still have so much time left because like I could tell that it wasn't really like bright outside yet. So I knew it was really early and I knew I still had time to sleep, but I just couldn't. So at 7 a.m. I gave up and started reading um, The Inspector General and I don't know, around 8 a.m. I finished it and it was fine. <laughs> like... It was a bit predictable. Okay, so like it is about the like greed and corruption of the people in like small towns, officials, so like, you know, schoolmasters, judges, uh, police officers, stuff like that. But it was a bit predictable and I have to say it was too long. I know, five acts, it was dragging on a bit. And I don't say it often because I really enjoy just reading plays, but I feel like this play in particular 
is kind of like it's better to see it on stage I feel like it would be more fun I mean I still you know it was entertaining I wasn't like laughing out loud because like I do think it's actually considered uh, a comedy not just like satire but yeah uh, I think I'm going to give it 3.5 stars that sounds that sounds fine I will update you on all of my ratings at the end of the video because I don't know sometimes I change my mind but I think I'm going to give it 3.5 stars 3.5 stars and yeah I think the next book that I will start reading will be Good Morning Midnight also I didn't tell you but when it comes to A Bear Called Paddington I'm not going to rate it uh, I don't know I'm not really the target audience for this book so I feel I would feel weird rating it, um, but I do feel like it stands the test of time. Like, not to <laughs> critically review a bar called Paddington, but I like I just kind of assumed since it was published in like 1958, I assumed it would have some things that wouldn't like age well, but I didn't really think so. I, I thought this was uh, something that kids could enjoy today too. Do I have anything else to update you on? I don't know. I'm just, I'm doing like a very light makeup. Nothing, nothing crazy. I was thinking about like wearing something that's not like a sweatshirt and looking a bit more put together, but um, I don't, I don't think I can be bothered. <laughs> also, today is October 1st and October is probably my favorite reading month not necessarily like favorite month of the year I prefer like months in the springtime early summer but like reading wise it's my favorite month uh, I will be participating in Victober I actually think I will be reading the group read which normally I don't really participate in the group read but this year the book that was chosen was The Way We Live Now by Anthony Trollope and I really wanted to read this book I actually put it on my like classics TBR last year and didn't get to it so I think I guess I should start this book today maybe after the 24 hour readathon probably not maybe tomorrow <laughs> but yeah my TBR for October is still not set in stone. There's that. I'm just talking at this point. After I finish getting ready, and honestly, I don't think there's like much else that I want to do to my face, to be honest. I'm going to make myself some coffee and sit down and start reading Good Morning Midnight. That's the update. I should get back to reading. Actually, how many hours do I have left? Let's see. It's... Mm, okay, let's say it's almost 9.30. So... Is it 9 hours? No. Is it 10 hours? Do I still have 10 hours left? That's a lot. <laughs> I already read three books. Yeah, let's, let's get back to reading. Crisis. 
I read like 44 pages of Good Morning Midnight since I don't know, 10 a.m. and it is now 1.30. That is three and a half hours. 44 pages, yeah. I did have a moment where I almost fell asleep but instead I just like lied with my eyes closed for like 20 minutes. I also had a bunch of breaks where I watched YouTube videos. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm going to get to... because this book is divided into three parts, so I think I'm going to get to part two and then start reading The Little Prince, just to kind of break it up a bit uh, with something a bit easier. It's not even that hard to read. It is a bit... like, the language isn't that hard to understand, it's just that it is written in a stream-of-consciousness way, and it does sometimes have like a bit of vagueness about it and also like the topic the main character is in paris and we know that something happened a few years earlier something i guess i'm guessing traumatic uh and we are slowly you know discovering the past and she's just you know struggling mentally and it is quite hard to read so yeah i'm going to read like what, 20, 20 more pages and then start reading A Little Prince. I still have six hours left, so I'm pretty sure I can finish this and finish A Little Prince. Ideally, I would like to also get to the nonfiction, but we'll see. And first things first, I have realized that I actually rated this on Goodreads. Uh, like, I knew I have read this before, like, ages ago in school. <laughs> but I just realized that in 2016, so when I joined Goodreads, I rated this two stars. <laughs> I kind of looked it up while reading this book and I was like... <laughs> I don't know, did I want to be, like, edgy and different? <laughs> or at the time that I remember not enjoying this book. I don't know. But basically, I have actually really enjoyed it. Yet again, I'm not going to rate it. <laughs> I think I'm going to like remove my rating on Goodreads because like two stars, who am I? But I think it's really hard to find the kind of age range when a kid should read this book because I feel like if you read it too early a lot of it might go over your head because it is like kind of filled with allegories but if you read it too late I feel like it might sound very pretentious like things like oh you can only see things with your heart like you know it feels like kind of an equivalent of Paulo Coelho's The Alchemist <laughs> and also Okay, the reason that I think I gave it two stars and I kind of remembered it as a book that I didn't enjoy is because reading this book for school and reading it with not a good teacher I feel like can very much taint your experience with this book. I mean, with, that is the case with a lot of books, but, you know, if a teacher is kind of telling you how you should feel about it, what, what are the interpretations what everything means, like overall explains it or something. But, like, I understand why a person wouldn't like this book. And interestingly, I do feel like, compared to Paddington, when it comes to rereading those books as adults, I do feel like The Little Prince is a better option, because when it comes to a bear called Paddington, every single chapter has similar form formula, like, it's very kind of repetitive, you know, Paddington misunderstands something or just, like, gets in trouble, even though his intentions aren't bad. <laughs> and then, you know, his family, like, looks for him and finds him and ugh, a happy ending. So it's very kind of formulaic. Well, here we have, like, a story from the beginning until the end. So that's my review. And it is... what time is it? 
it's like 3 30 so i have four hours okay can i finish good morning midnight during that time i think so i don't think i can get to what was the other book dimmy dim is a message but uh We'll see. So this is the kind of last stretch. I will probably update you at the 24 hour mark. if this was the best choice for a 24-hour readathon. This book definitely took me the longest to read, not only because of the subject matter, but also because of the narrative style. Like I said, it's kind of a stream of consciousness type of narrative, and it is very non-linear, and the past and present kind of bleed into each other the further you get into the story. But I did enjoy it. Um, I'm going to give it four stars. But this is quintessential no plot, just vibes kind of book. And the vibes are depression. So I had a good old time with this one. <laughs> and yeah, let's wrap this up. I have read... How many books? I have read five books. Or four books, one play. I do wish I could get to word number six, the short story, and the medium is the message, non-fiction book, but nevertheless, I think I did okay. <laughs> the last like 10 hours <laughs> of the readathon, I was fighting with sleep, but yeah, hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next one. Bye!